Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to the workshop. This week we're going to get these two saws back in action. So let's roll the intro. the two saws that I'm going to restore this week. I already have some WD-40 working on the nuts. As you can see these are um, these are pretty bad. This one less so, this one quite a lot so. And these are both crosscut saws. This one's also known as a panel saw. This is just a rough short crosscut. The first thing I need to do is get all this rust off. But because they're rusted all the way down to the heat, I'm going to knock off the set. And I'll talk more about set later. Then I'm just going to take a lump hammer and make myself a little anvil and knock all this set off. But before we do that, let's have a little test to see what they're like now so we can pair at the end. So I'm going to ask nearly nothing of these. I'm just going to cut a piece of wood off the pallet and let's just see. That was extremely unpleasant. Very rough. Okay. Now we'll get the panel saw go. I'll use the same ends for both. When I give you an after. You can see they're pretty badly torn up. Cross cut should leave a nice joint. Obviously the one with loads of teeth won't. But um, yeah, let's see, we're storing these to see if we can improve those times, get better cuts. So basically the set on the saw means that the teeth alternate so that the cut is wider than the thickness of your saw here. So basically you have your teeth like this, when it's flat, and what you want to do it had them go like that, so that's wider than the width of your blade. So that's what I'm going to knock off here. I'm going to knock off the set, which will allow me to sand it the whole way down because then I don't have bits sticking out. And I'll put the set back on it when I'm done. So what I'm doing here, as I said before, is I put a lump hammer in my vise to form an anvil. And I'm just going along and tapping down all the teeth. And I go in from both sides with this to make sure that those are all now in line to plate. This will make it so much easier for sanding and getting everything down to a perfect finish. And then we'll use a saw set to put the set back on when we're done. And I do the same for the longer panel saw. Before I start removing the rust, what I want to do is take off the handles. These are normally uh, relatively easy to do. They're a double threaded screw you can screw it together on both sides. You will have seen these before in certain cabinetry, that kind of stuff. Now, it was quite easy for the panel saw because it actually was screws, uh, but it turned out that the smaller crosscut saw was actually riveted. So I ended up having to work on it with the rivets in place, which meant I didn't get it quite as clean as I would hope. Okay, it would appear that they're rivets, made to look like screws, so it's going to be a bit more awkward, but we'll get the start to start My preference for rough, roughs removal is a flat scraper, and then I'll work back from there. You can see a marked difference there just with that bit of scraping. 
compared to the other side. So I'll do that there on, on the other side on this. And then we'll move on to some sandpaper, get these plates nice. Sanded up to about 800 grit, looking a lot better. It's a shame I couldn't get the handle off, and it's still kind of gunky in around the hand. But 99% of this is good. So she sanded up the 800. I, I did the exact same for the plate of the panel saw. So it's up to 800, I think. Uh, Maybe 1000. I wasn't checking. So this does need the handle to be put back into it. But I'll show you now quickly. We're going to put the set back on these and then we're going to sharpen them. So, we'll start with the handle on this. So, here's the plate for this saw. And unfortunately, I'm actually missing the screw. Now, luckily, these two are slightly bigger. And this guy here, which is a cabinet fixing, fits into that hole. So, it's not unusual for a saw to have a decorative middle piece, so I'm going to say what that, that's what this is. So I get the original fixing back in and then we'll slightly enlarge this hole in the handle to fit in the new plate or the new hole. Take this back out and I'll spray it gold to make it look a bit grassy, matching with the brass. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but it gets it back work. So, set time. So here we have the saw vise, which I made in the previous video, linky thing up there. Just tighten up the clamp. Now normally you'll set after you sharpen because I've knocked the set off here. I put the set on first before I sharpen. But to do that, I'm gonna need this baby. That's known as a saw set. So inside in there, there's a little hammer that comes up. That's what bends the tooth out of the way. So this saw as check it here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six teeth every inch on this cell. So we'll set our we'll set our thing probably a little higher. I'll probably go with seven TPI, not six. So I want it a little finer. And we're going to alternate this, so I'm going to bend one this way, the next that way. So, I can still see some of the old set. So, put that one that way. That one that way. 
down that way, and then we'll go back over, doing the same, the whole thing along, whole way along the side. And I'm alternating these, so I'm going left, right, left, right. I just did four or five there just to show. And I'll do a zoomy while I do the rest. Now I am by no manner or means or description an expert on saw sharpening. But briefly, there are two basic types of tooth geometry that you would have on a woodworking saw for two different jobs. The first type would be what's known as a rip cut, which has a chisel tooth as it's called. This you would use for cutting along the grain. The other type then is the cross cut, which is what I'm sharpening here which has a knife point. This is used for cutting across the grain. I'll leave a link in the description to an excellent video by Paul Sellers, who goes into so much detail on how to do this, the angles, the approach, and everything you need. Uh, but for now, we'll just cut to the last few strokes. Now, the panel saw has the other type of two geometry a rip cut so you'll notice here that as I'm doing these unlike when I was cutting the cross cut I'm actually going at 90 degrees to the plate again I'll leave a link in the description on how to sharpen both of these two types but now I think it's time we tested these out so here we are probably should have just sharpen them but let's go back to testing Tell you this feels dangerous. This here is where this baby sings. So, it's, it's unusual uh, without getting into it if there's any people who know saws. Uh, these are not straight up and down like I'd expect a rip to be. They're at about 15 degrees, which is what I'd expect a cross cut. But the actual angle of filing is straight across. But. Once I get this started, it's just singing to the back. One hand is terrible. It tracks beautifully. It is a bit rough, but. Just feel it. It's hard to explain, but I know what the fuck to look into. I don't soon stop on one of the table. So that's this week's video. It was just a quick bit of fun. Uh, I've wanted to do these for a while uh, for a specific reason. There's a big build coming next week. Uh, I've been working on it behind the scenes for the last two weeks and it'll be three weeks by the time it gets out there. So I hope you all enjoy that. Get out there, 
have the fun. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And absolutely do. Try this at home.